believe out of God's Bible, knowing this, that if my words fail, his won't. So I want to read a, a scripture out of the book of Isaiah. And I've got some scriptures written out here and a few comments I'd like to make mention of as quick as possible and then go right in to have the prayer for the sick again tonight. I want to take this opportunity while we're turning to Isaiah 45. I want to take this opportunity to thank all the ministers that's cooperated in this meeting. Brother Shores, very dear friend of mine, he represents the Assemblies of God here in the city. Brother Outlaw, another precious friend of mine from the Jesus Name uh, Church. Brother Fuller from the Independence, another precious friend of mine. Not only these three men, they represent the three major groups, but other ministers that I've ministered for in uh, previous of other campaigns. They all cooperated and come together, and the people's come out. I certainly trust my brethren that many of your people that were sick and needy got help during this time. And I'm sure that I tried all I know how to do, and I'm sure the Holy Spirit uh, will confirm what's been said and done. So the Lord bless you now as we look to the Bible, Isaiah 45, beginning with 22nd, chapter, 22nd verse. Look unto me, and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is none else. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness, and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall answer. I know that isn't very much reading of the Scripture, but that's sufficient because it's eternal. It's God's Word. And if I should call this a text now for about 20 minutes or 30, I would like to say, I want to say, looking unto Jesus. That's been the call for... Uh, years. Look unto me, ye ends of the earth. I would like to kindly turn that just a little bit and look especially unto me at the end of each world system, because he always makes himself known so real at the end of a world system when it's coming to its end. Look unto me, all ye ends of the world, I might say. The scripture says the ends, ends of the earth. Ends is in plural. Ends of the earth. Many say we've heard this for many years. Look unto me, look unto me. Well, that's true. But the thing, the question is, is what do you see when you look? You've been asked that for a long time. Look unto me. Your people say, look. They mention the word look means to pay attention, look up, or to look at, and look out. And now God is saying here, look unto me. I am God and there's none other. And I wonder in a time that we are living in now, what could we look to that would be more uh, solid than God? And God is the word. So look to the Word of God today for your answer. The Bible has the answer for this day. It's had it for other days. It's got it forever because it is Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible has the answer because the Bible is the revelation of Jesus Christ being revealed since the foundation of the world. He has been revealed in the form of prophets. He's been revealed in the form of kings. He's been in, revealed in the form of lawgivers, because that's what he is. King, prophet, lawgiver, and God. Now, he said, look to me. And you say, I've done that. It depends on what you looked at determines uh, what you look at is why, and what you look for him for. What are you looking at? What purpose do you have in looking at him? It only depends on what you look for. That's what you find. Usually, people come to a meeting, a religious gathering. Some of them go to find a big crowd of people to sit with. 
Some, well, I hate to say this, but it's true. Some go to church just to show their clothes they're wearing. Some goes to church because they say this is the biggest church in the city. Or oh, it's, um, it's got the best name. Certain class of people goes to this church. Then that's, that's wrong. See, you're not looking to the right thing that the church is established for. God said, look to me. Many people go to the services and um, just to be seen. And sometimes people go to services. It's too bad to say this. We could linger on it a long time. But they go to church with their mind already made up before they go. If certain things is said or something just against their idea, they'll get right up and walk out. They just simply will not stand because they've got their own idea of what it must be. That's the very reason that Jesus was not understood when he came to the earth. If they would have only looked into the Word of God instead of their, of their tradition of that day, they would have known he was the Son of God. Because the Bible plainly declared his full coming, and he come in full revelation of the Word. And each generation reveals him in the full revelation it's lauded for that time. This generation must reveal Jesus Christ. It's the revelation of him that's promised in the Word must be revealed to this generation. If the churches won't receive it, somebody will rise up and do it. Because John said, God is able of these stones to rise children unto Abraham. Don't think to say within yourself, we have Abraham to our father. For God is able of these stones to rise children to Abraham. For what God has said, God is fully able to perform what he has promised to do. A father Abraham realized that. And against hope, he believed in hope and staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, giving praise to God because God made him the promise. He's made us a promise for this day. He's made us a promise. And our promise today is just as sure to be revealed as it was to Abraham. For we are the children of Abraham, being dead in Christ. We are Abraham's seed and heirs with him according to the promise. So many people come in, brought up their opinion, set in a full gospel meeting or any other meeting, and they'll just wait just for a few moments until something is said that they don't agree with, then up and out. They just won't stay to hear any more. They, got, they won't stay to see if there was uh, what the truth of it is. Now we say, is that spirit, where did that come from? It's always been. It had come from Genesis. It was down through the Scripture. Many times when Paul was speaking one time, rather, to a group of people, while they, they listened at him closely, as long as he stayed in the law. But when he began to tell about the revelation, the heavenly vision, quickly it changed the congregation. They rose up to screaming. If they just listened to what the man said, he was revealing the truth of God by the word. Some time ago in a big city, in this United States, I was invited for a, a revival. Just very few, a few people there that turned out. Probably the entire revival was no more than it's right in this building tonight. And I thought, well, I would give a, a breakfast, free breakfast. And I'd take him a love offering to make the breakfast free to uh, some of the ecumenical believers there in the city and told him to come out. I would like to speak with them and tell them my purpose of being there. To help the city, to help the sick, to help them, every church. Well, that morning when Dr. Lee Vale was my speaker uh, at the campaign... He had introduced me to the, the audience after the breakfast, and I took the, this text. I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Just in a moment, I noticed the minister looked at his watch, raised over and nodded his head to the other fellow, got up and went out. Before I had said six or eight words, almost a third of that ministerial group had walked out. Before I'd had five minutes of speaking, just what Paul said, that he was not disobedient to the heavenly vision because God had called him to this work, they seen right then where I was going to base my thought. There wasn't over one-third of the group left. Now, that's not even giving Christian consideration as a man that would name the name of Jesus Christ. I say this with respect, but I say it to sink in. I had more understanding and better fellowship with a bunch of African witch doctors than I did that group of ministers that morning. They give more consideration to the Word of God and ask questions for the, and I could give them the hope that laid within me for the hope of eternal life. These ministers had no time for it at all. Just quickly, as soon as you'd say something out, they'd go. And um, so 
That's the way it is. They got their mind made up. They just stay so long, and that's all they want to know. If it, one word disagreeing with any petty thing that they believe in, they cannot stay and listen through it. That's the reason they couldn't believe Jesus Christ at his first advent. That's the reason they'll miss him in the second. They miss him each time. They always have. He's revealed himself in Moses, revealed himself in Noah, revealed himself in Elijah. All the prophets, they missed it each time. Jesus said, which one of your fathers hasn't put the prophets in the tombs out there that they're garnishing now? That's true. It's always been true. It's true yet today. Yet in the midst of all of this, we're commanded to look. Look at him. All the ends of the world. Sometimes he come in, a man will judge you by what kind of clothes. If you don't wear ministerial clothes and so forth, then that's out. They won't have nothing to do with you. Sometimes they want to look to see what kind of an education you have. If you speak your words proper, if you stand correctly, how you use your nouns and pronouns. Frankly, I don't know which is noun or pronoun. I couldn't tell you. So that, that's out for me. And I, I just don't know. I couldn't make the difference between a noun and a pronoun. I did when I was in school, but I've forgotten that a long time ago. I just know one thing, and that's Jesus Christ and the power of his resurrection. That's all I know how to say about it. <laughs> The adjectives and pronouns, I know. And I think that's what we all come together for in meetings like this, is to know Him. Not know nouns and pronouns, but know Him, Jesus Christ, and the power of His resurrection. Now, some people, when they look to Jesus, they look and see, look and look at Him. And when they see Him, they see in Him only a church founder or a, a, a church organ or maybe a, a creed for a church. That's what many people look to Jesus to see. He's just a new creed that was added to an old doctrine. Now, many people look and see him like that. Some look and see him as a myth. Santa Claus. Or some of them look to him as some historical act that God did many years ago. Some of them look to him yet as a baby in a manger. But the question is, what do you see when you look at him? Do you see the second person of the Trinity? Or do you see a Trinity three in one? You'll only see him as you look at him through the Word. That's the only way you know it because he is the Word. It'll reveal himself. Depends on what you're looking for. If you look to him to argue, then you're looking wrong. He didn't argue. It wasn't meat for him to argue. Remember, you see him as you look at him through his word and recognize him. Now, you cannot see him until your eyes is open to the fact. Two men can look at the same scripture and disagree. One of them's got to be right and the other one wrong. Sometimes there's things that's happening around us that we cannot understand. Others are saying they see things. Others see nothing about it. Look at Dothan down there that day when Elijah had been uh, surrounded by the Syrian army. And his uh, faithful servant, Gehazi, who lived with him, waited on him, cooked for him, and uh, kept his clothes clean, poured water on his hands, was right with him day and night, listened to him teach and preach. And that morning when he woke up, he looked out and he seen the Syrian army all around. He said, my father, alas, look at the opposition we have, the whole Syrian army. You see, Elijah, when he rose up and looked, he saw something that Gehazi didn't see. And so he prayed, God, open this young man's eyes. Now, his eyes were wide open. But he said, open his eyes that he might see. And when his eyes spiritually came open, the whole mountains was full of chariots of fire and angels all around that prophet. See, it was different when his eyes came open. Now, people look at the word literally, and that's the way you're supposed to look at it, but it declares itself both literally and spiritually. The Spirit makes the word to live to the promise. In other words, it's a seed. The Spirit gives its life. It unctionizes. It gives it its, its goal like rain gives to the seed that's buried in the ground. It breaks forth life. And when you look at Jesus as the promised word of the hour, then it will be revealed to you. If you look at him, you'll see that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, Amen. the same Christ. A portion of God's word has been allotted to every generation, all the way from Genesis. God always sends someone 
Usually the Ecclesiastics gets it so mixed up until it's in traditions and so forth, as it was in the coming of Jesus. And then God sends a prophet along. The word of the Lord comes to the prophet. He reveals it. Stoned to death or put out, kicked out. And then after he's gone a while, they build his tomb and say he was a great man. They live in a shadow of what he was back there and refuse the word going on today. It's just like man. He's always talking about how great God is and what he done. How, what things he's going to do and not seeing the things he's doing right now. See? He looks at him in history, looks at him in prophecy, but forgets that he's doing the same right now as he did then. That's just in man. We noticed the disciples one time. After the, it was the first Easter morning. What a morning. Jesus up from the dead, walking among the flowers. And two friends, Theopius and one of his friends, was on the road down to Emmaus. And they were walking along, talking, grieved at their heart. And a man stepped out of the bush and walked with them the rest of the day, talking to them about Christ. And that evening, they asked him, he acted like he was going to pass them by. But they asked him to come in. He did. And when he did, he did something there the way he'd done it before his crucifixion and his resurrection. Before he was crucified, they seen him do it just like he did. They recognized it was him, though been with him all day long, and never recognized who he was. It's possible today that good man, fine man, walk with Christ reading his word, and still don't recognize that this is the hour that certain things of this Bible must be fulfilled. Amen. It's the hour that we're living in. The time is at hand when these things must be done. It's written, and thus it must be fulfilled, because God promised it. Yes, our eyes must be open to see the word. Now, you can look at the word. The Pharisees had that word drawn out just exactly the way the Messiah was coming. They believed they were right. And here he was born and walked right among them. And they condemned him when he told them, You search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. Search the Scriptures. They said, We are Moses' disciples. He said, If you would be Moses' disciples, you would know me, for Moses wrote of me. And he did. Moses said, The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me, a lawgiver, and so forth, and a prophet. And him the people shall hear. See, if they'd have known Moses' writing, they would have known him. They thought they knowed Moses' writing. But you see, they didn't know it. See, they were blinded to that very fact. So just a few words from him like that. What did they do? Sprung up and said, This man's got a devil. He comes to teach us. What school did he come from? We have no record of him. Wonder whose fellowship card he's packing or something on that order was the question. But they failed to look and see that the very God that promised the word was vindicating it right there through that person of Jesus Christ. For he was the light of the hour. He was the light for the people to walk in. And only word of God produces light. Only God's word produces light. God's word produces the sunshine. God's word produces the earth. God's word produces the air. Everything is the word of God made manifest. Everything's got a reality to it. When he shared, he said, I am God, and besides me, there's no other. Some looked. Let's take some that did look. Isaiah, one time, a young prophet. Your last time at Phoenix, I spoke of him to the businessman, I believe it was. Ah, oh, he had been leaning heavy upon the king's shoulder, Uzziah. And um, we find out that Uzziah got all puffed up and was stricken with leprosy. Then Isaiah had to go down to the temple and pray and say, confess him to be a sinner. And he saw the cherubims coming forth with their wings covering their holy faces and feet and flying with wings and crying, holy is the Lord God. When Isaiah got a glimpse of Jesus Christ, here's what he saw. He never saw any just ordinary man. He never saw a philosopher. As most of our Protestant churches today, I think it's 68 or 86 percent of them, in a survey denied believing, they denied the virgin birth of Jesus Christ. Our Protestant preachers. That's right. This is off of statistics. Right down, they deny the virgin birth. They do not believe it was actually virgin. So then Isaiah didn't see something like that. Some of them, they said he was a good man. Some of them, like some of our uh, denominations today, said he's a good man. Sure, there's no fault in him. 
But uh, I tell you, his words are, cannot be uh, established our belief today. Well, any belief and any faith established outside of the Word of God, let it alone. Jesus said, every man's word will fail, but mine will not. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Amen. So therefore, any creed or anything that's not built on this Word of God, all the Word of God, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. Not just a word here and a word there and a little thing here and there and bit it together, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Man shall take every word of the Bible, put it together. It's already together. Just read it and believe it. Act upon it. God will honor it. Now we find out that Isaiah, when he looked, what did you see, Isaiah? He saw one was called Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. That's what he looked. I'd call another man, Daniel. One time you had the opportunity to see him, a great prophet. What did you see? He said, I saw a stone hewed out of the mount without hands and rolled into the kingdoms of the world and broke them to pieces and they blowed away like the chaff upon a summer's thrashing floor and the stone rolled into a great mountain that covered all the earth. That's what he said about him. Therefore he will rule the world someday. People are struggling today for a world ruler. Each nation wants their language, their, their thoughts. Each denomination wants their groups over the other. But there's coming one. That'll be Jesus Christ. He is the ruler of the universe. None less than God himself. Nebuchadnezzar one day had done an evil thing. He threw three believing children into the fiery furnace. And when he opened the door to see how they were getting along in there... He saw the fourth man on the inside of the furnace. And what did you see when you looked, Nebuchadnezzar? He said he looked like the Son of God. That's what he saw when he looked into a crime that he had done. There was one that looked like the Son of God. Ezekiel took a look one day. He said, I saw him too. And he was a wheel in the middle of the wheel, turning up in the middle of the air. That's what he looked like to Ezekiel. John, the greatest of all prophets, he was the one that introduced Jesus. Jesus said he was greater than any man had been born. Did you ever think why that was? All the rest of them spoke of him. The word of the Lord comes to the prophet. That's the Bible said so. And in all the other prophets had come to him in visions. But when the word come to John, it was flesh. Jesus was the word. He is the word. He always was the word. But here is where the fullness of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. When he come to him in the water, he was a prophet. If the Word's made flesh, it's got to come to the prophet. The Word, wherever it is, it must come to a prophet because a prophet is the one the Word comes to. And John was a prophet of the day. And when the Word come to him, walked out in the water and said, uh, I want to be baptized. And John said, I have need to be baptized of thee. And why comest thou unto me? He said, Suffer to be so now, for thus it is becoming to us to fulfill all righteousness. Do you ever think why John said that? Why would John say that to Jesus? Why? Because it's, it was becoming to them. They were, there was the, the prophet and the word, and the word had come to the prophet. Now, it was becoming to them that all righteousness must be fulfilled. What happened? Then John baptized Jesus because John, being a prophet and know the word, the sacrifice, must be washed before it's presented. And that's why John baptized Jesus. John looked and he saw, why did he know this was Jesus? He saw a dove that had been told him by the Spirit of God. And upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on, he's the one that will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Noah, look. We find out here there's another man, look, by the name of Noah. Noah, he looked and saw the justice of God upon the just judgment of God, rather, upon a wicked, word-denying generation was being poured out. In his vision, as Noah was a prophet, God had given him a vision of how to build the ark and instructed him how to make the construction, how it must be built. In this, how can Noah, unless this vision be in the Word of God, when he's seen this wrath and making a way of preparation, always before coming judgment there is a preparation made. It always is the Word of God. And when he was constructing the Word of God together, Bearing record that his vision was true and he believed in it. Scoffers made fun of him and so forth. But Noah had looked ahead and seen the justice of God 
had to require the judgment upon the people, and he constructed an ark to save his own household. When he looked, he saw the coming wrath of God, and he made preparations for the people to escape this thing. So did John the Baptist. He made preparation for the escape. And so is the Holy Ghost today, forerunning the coming of Jesus Christ, is making a construction. The body of Jesus Christ, we're baptized into it, not by a creed, not by a denomination or a handshake, but by the Spirit of God, we're baptized into the body of Jesus Christ. A construction that'll stand the judgment because it's already been judged. When I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Yes, Noah, he looked and he saw the, uh, what was coming. Moses looked one day, he seen a pillar of fire. It attracted his attention, this great theologian. He had run with all of his theological training and his understanding by his mother of the word itself, of how that he was to deliver the children of Israel. But when he tried in his way, he failed. And although his mother had thoroughly instructed him on what to do and what he would do and what God had raised him up for, all this knowledge, as good as it is, and it is good, but yet it had to be set off. That was only mechanics. Mechanics ain't what runs the automobile. It's the dynamics that runs it. The mechanics don't run the church. It's the dynamics, the Holy Ghost that gets into this Word. It's not a seminary that teaches you all the theology and the Greek interpretations. But it's the dynamics of the Holy Ghost in there to set that afire and to bring it to pass and to make it live just exactly what the promised Word is for this hour. Not the mechanics, the dynamics. It takes mechanics and dynamics. The Word and the Spirit. They are the one that gives life. What God promised for the hour, look for it to be fulfilled. You must look to Him because He is the Word. And the only way you can look to the Word is look to Him. Look to Him, He is the Word. And the Word promised to this day is to be fulfilled this day. Noah's time could not be filled this day. It's only a type. Moses' time and so forth. But this is the day that God has promised these things that we're now enjoying. These things that we're now seeing at the world's laughing at. This great... Momentous power of the Holy Spirit that can change a sinner's heart, that can take a lukewarm church member and give him a testimony that will set the church afire from where he come out of. It's a dynamic that got into the Word. As I've often said, I've found two classes of people. One of them is a fundamental. Positionally, he knows where he is in Christ because of the Word. But he doesn't have any faith in what he's doing. He hasn't received the Holy Spirit. Then I find the Pentecostals. Many of them has received the Holy Ghost but don't know who they are. It's like a man who's got money in the bank and can't write a check, and the other can write a check and got no money in the bank. If you could get those two together, if you could get the Pentecostal to realize who he is and come back to the real full word of God with that baptism of the Holy Ghost, it'll set the world afire again for the new Pentecostal revival. Brother, sister, that's true. Look unto me, all ye ends of the earth, for I am God, and there's none other besides me. Oh, we can discern communism, we can discern everything else, but wonder if we can discern the portion of word that's allotted to, by God for this day. I wonder if we can see the sign that God told us to be here on earth at this day. I wonder if we do it. Yes, back to Moses again. He was all had all the mechanics about it, but one day in a burning bush, he heard a man speak out with a human voice, or a burning pill of fire back in a bush, speak out in a human voice and said, I am that I am. I've heard the groans of my people. I remember my word and I'm come down to deliver them. And I'm sending you to do it. What a different man that was. As soon as he got the, he had the mechanics, but he got the dynamics in it. Surely I'll be with you. That's all it took for Moses to go. He looked and he saw in the burning bush. Later in the trip, we find Israel, when they were coming out, they looked to and they seen a brass serpent. And in this brass serpent that was set up for their sickness, they had seen, and they seen a brass serpent. In this brass serpent, they seen a type, the judgment that God would put upon Jesus Christ to die for all of us unworthy sinners, guilty. That's what he saw. The disciples looked on him one time in trouble out on the sea. And what did they see? They seen their help. They seen help coming through him. Martha, one day when she had a death in the family, her own brother was dead, Lazarus, the only brother she had. She looked to him in the time of death, and she saw resurrection in life. That's what she saw in him. Now, he had seemed like he had turned her down. He had went away when her brother died. But the first thing you know, all at once he found out that the boy had been dead and buried for four days, he's already stinking. 
Martha knew there was something about him was different. She had read the scripture. She believed him to be the son of God. Emmanuel, God made manifest. She knew that he was God's representative. And she knew if Elijah could raise up a dead baby and him being just a portion of the word for that hour, Christ was the fullness of the word. She knew surely he had power to raise up her brother. And when she went to him in the hour of death and bereavement, she found resurrection in life when she looked to him. She didn't look to him to criticize him or ask him why he didn't come or question him. You should never question the word of God. That's what got the whole human race into trouble when Eve questioned whether God would keep all of his word or not. I say tonight, brethren, it's come time that we must believe every word that God wrote. It's every bit the truth. Man shall live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now we find out that Mary found resurrection in life. So did Jairus, the little priest, a secret believer, that when he saw Jesus and looked upon him, he found resurrection in life. The hungry people looked to him one day and found sustaining bread, a type that the hungry today can find the bread of life. Not find a creed, you don't find a founder, you don't find a reformer, you find life when you find Christ. The bread of life. The dying thief looked to him in the hour of distress. And what did he find? He found his pardon. Who else could he look to? The Roman government wouldn't pardon him. No one else would pardon him. But he looked to Jesus in his distress and he found somebody who could pardon him. My brother, sister, tonight, if you're hanging like he was then on the balance of condemnation and knowing if you die tonight as a lukewarm church member or a lukewarm Pentecostal or whatever you might be, you know where you're going. Look to him tonight, the one who can set you free. One tonight, if you're just only a membership only and don't know what the resurrection of Christ means to live in a human heart, look to him. He's God and he alone. You'll find pardoning like this poor, thick, uh, sin-sick uh, thief did hanging on the cross. The sick looked to him. What did they find? They found a healer. The sick tonight can still look to him and find a healer. They found in him what was represented in the brass serpent. If that was a type, this was the antitype. The blind looked and could see. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, Hebrews 13, 8. The poet looked one time. Find what he could see. Blind Fanny Crosby looked one time to see what she could see. Being blind, here was her answer. Thou the stream of all my comfort, more than life to me. Whom have I on earth beside thee, or whom in heaven but thee? Eddie Pruitt one time when he couldn't sell his songs and he wondered what to do and he went back in his office and the inspiration fell upon him. The Holy Spirit grabbed the pen and he looked and he saw him in power and he wrote and penned the song. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. That's what he saw in him. Oh my. Peter, a local fisherman, when his brother had been tanning John the Baptist revival. Andrew. They've been talking it over about what a Messiah would be and discussing it. His father had told him that there'll be many fanatics raised up just before the Messiah, but you'll know him. He'll be a prophet. The Lord said he'll be a prophet. We understand to believe our prophets. And finally one day, with all the persuasion that Andrew could do, he finally got Peter to come listen to him because he's going to have a meeting down there on the coast one morning. He went down to hear the word of God. And while he walked up in the presence of Jesus Christ, what did Peter see when he looked on him? He said... Our name is Simon, and you're the son of Jonas. That settled it forever. He knew the word of God had been fulfilled. Nathaniel, one time, a real believer in the Old Testament, looking forward for the coming of the Messiah, he was brought by Philip, a friend of his, in the presence of Jesus, standing up on a platform, box stump, whatever it might be, praying for the sick. And when Nathaniel walked into the prayer line or whatever it was and got the first look at him, he heard a voice come back to him and said, Behold an Israelite in whom there's no guile. He said, Rabbi, when did you know me? When did you ever see me? He said, Before Philip called you, when, I was, when you were under the tree, I saw you. What did Nathaniel confess that he saw? What did he say? Thou art the Christ. Thou art the King of Israel. Thou art the Son of God. That's what he saw. When he saw the true word of God for that day, 400 years without a prophet and seen, know the very thoughts that was in his heart and what he had done, he knew that could be nothing less than Messiah. We hadn't had it. They hadn't had it. And it was promised. And everybody knew the time was at hand. So do we know the same thing today? Yes. We know Jesus promised these things. 
He said, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. So shall it be when he comes. We see these things happening. What do you see when you look? Do you see, you think of mythology or, or you see some kind of a, a telepathy or what do you think? Like they did back there, the Pharisees looked upon him. What did they say? This man's got a devil. The same people looking at the same person, human beings. One saw the Son of God, a promised, vindicated word, and the other called it a devil. What do you see? What are you looking at today when you see the power of the Holy Ghost sweep into a building? Fulfilling His promise that in these last days what He would do. What do you see when you look? If you see the Word of God vindicated, then it's the Holy Spirit of God. Yes, sir. Nathaniel saw the promised Word that he had lived for to see. A anointed promise made flesh. Moses, the prophet, had said so. That Moses, the anointed prophet, had promised that Word. A woman at the well one day. Many people had turned him down. The Pharisees and Sadducees had called him a devil. They said he'd done this by fortune telling. He was an evil spirit. He was mad. He had no place to go. That's what was the trouble with him. Uh, he was just a, a renegade man. What happened? What happened? He passed by Samaria in the city of Sychar. And when he went out there one day and sat down upon the, the little panoramic there, this a woman came out to get a drink of water. And she said, uh, and he heard, she heard a voice saying, bring me a drink, woman. And he, she looked over. What did she see? First, she couldn't understand it. She questioned him. It's not customary for you Samaritans uh, to ask, or you Jews to ask Samaritans such. He said, but woman, if you knew who you were talking to. I remember, there was a little light seed of life laying there. I'd been predestinated from the foundation of the world. She was watching for it. She had sick and tired of all of the theology and stuff that they had said. But she was watching for something because she knew there was coming a Messiah. And he said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I have none. said, you've told the truth. You've had five. Quickly, that little seed sprung to life. What did she see? She saw the sign of the Messiah. In a man. She saw the promised word made manifest. She said, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. We haven't had one for hundreds of years. We know that we're promised that Messiah is coming. And when he comes, he'll tell us this. That's what he'll do. See, what did she saw? What did she see? She saw the sign that was promised for that day made manifest. The Holy Ghost is promised for this day. The power of his resurrection. A church that these signs shall follow them that believe. Jesus promised and the things that I do shall you also. What do you look when you see? When you go to church on Sunday morning, do you look for a fine organ? A well-dressed minister, a robe choir, a bunch of women with paint on. What do you look for? Some kind of a society in the churches. You belong to this and that. What do you look for? That's about what you see. Listen here. No wonder when you hear the flat gospel and see the Holy Ghost come in and make it manifest amongst the old-fashioned bunch of people. It's far to you. It's hard for you to believe. As I said the other night about Joseph, it was hard for him to think of Mary being pregnant. How could she be that? A holy little woman like that. And she said Gabriel had visited her. But it was so unusual. It was so unusual for a thing like that. It never happened before. That's where God dwells in the unusual to the carnal mind. But those who believe Him to be the same yesterday, today, and forever, all things are possible. Every word that He promised will be fulfilled. It's the unusual things that makes Him God. He goes to the unusual. He makes everything unusual to the people. Yes, sir. All right, the woman looked on him and she saw the sign of the Messiah. God manifested in flesh. Many, the same people, looked and didn't see nothing. The unbelievers in the days of Noah, what did they see? A fanatic blundering away on what he called a boat. That's all they seen. When the very boat itself was constructed by a vision from Almighty God, the very thing that he was pounding on, his message he was preaching, he was constructing by his message. Barren record that he was righteous and was looking forward. He lived what he preached. That's what we ought to do today. And no man's got a right to preach until he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. Theologians and mathematicians and 
so forth can explain it all away from you. But if a man's ever been on the backside of the desert in that sacred spot and met God like Moses did, there's no man can take that away from him. He knows. He was the one who was there. There's nobody can tell him anything about it. He was there. That's the reason Jesus commanded his disciples, don't preach until you go up to the city of Jerusalem and receive power from on high. Then you shall be witnesses of me. That's what they saw. Yes, sir. Noah, they couldn't see nothing. What did they do after doing that? Ignored the word of God and brought judgment upon themselves. It's correctly. I say with Jack Moore, not quoting him, but saying this for, I think it's seasonable now. Jack Moore said, if God don't sink America and burn her up, he'll have to raise up Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize for burning them. And that's the truth. God is just. His word is, has a just recompense. And he certainly will judge the world for his action against his word today. No matter how many gatherings we have, how much religious gatherings we have, that isn't it. This word, look, there's no more religious times than it was the day that when uh, Jesus came on earth. Oh, everything was swallowed up in religion and tradition, and it's all wrong. Amen. So was it when Amos, the little bald-headed preacher, we don't know where he come from, his two little eyes narrowed when he'd come up across the hill and look down into Samaria. It was a great city of tourists like Phoenix. Many of the people come from over the world to look. Look at this great city, how beautiful it was. Oh, everything is going on, nightclubs and a real place of gaiety, a place to live, they said. But this little farmer boy, struck by the Holy Spirit, come down through there. He had no body to go ahead and make arrangements for his meetings. He had no signs up, no denomination to affiliate with him or nobody to back him up. But when he walked up across the hill and narrowed those little eyes as he looked down upon that city, he saw something that none of the rest of them saw. All of them seen the gaiety and stuff of the city, but he saw the pending judgment of God. And he prophesied against it. They called him crazy. But 11 years later, it all happened just exactly the way he said. Man who can look up on church the way it's going today and people the way they're going and predict blessings in future. I predict judgment. Not only the just God requires judgment for an ignoring his word. He just to come and identify it before us and to make it right. But a just God through all ages, he can't change his plan. He never changes his plan. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His ways are the same. His word is the same. His, all he is the same. He's full of mercy when someone's ready to repent. But judgment will follow if you don't repent. Pharaoh, when he looked upon and a so-called fanatic, so-called fanatic prophet with many claims of deliverance. That's all he saw. But the Israelites saw the hand of God upon Moses. Yes, sir. The rich man looked and saw, had potentials, but his organization was greater than what he could go through with it. Where's his next look? He looked out of hell. Exactly. Judgment come to him. That was the next time he looked. So will it be with many people today. The Roman soldier took a look one time when they crucified Jesus. He looked to see what he had done. But it was too late then. Friends, America's going to do that too. Yes. They're going to look someday and say, truly that was the Son of God. But it'd be too late. They laughed and made fun for the last time. He could only look then and see where he could have have been saved, but it was too late then. He crucified the Prince of Life. And so many times today that people turn away Jesus Christ from their hearts when they seem clearly of vindicating who he is right in the midst of us. Yes, sir. Pilate took a look one day and was convinced, but his politics was too great. He just couldn't, uh, he couldn't stand up to it. Luther took a look and he saw justification. He went with it. Then they organized. Wesley come along, seen sanctification when he looked at Christ, that the church should be sanctified. He went right on with Saint, the Pentecost come along and seen the restoration of the gifts. What did they all do? Just exactly like Catholic did, organized it. Put it right back again. Oh, God, one day I took a look, and when I did, I saw Alpha and Omega. I saw the beginning and the end. I saw Jesus Christ the same yesterday. I saw a partner of my sin. I've seen someone that took my place. My, what do you see when you look? I'm looking right now at an old friend of mine, Bill Dow, sitting here. The man's going on 92 years old. A few days ago, not long ago, rather about six months ago, he had a complete heart failure and heart attack together. The doctor says he's dying. His wife called me up and said, Brother Branham, come, he's dying. Bill's your friend. And I said, all right, I will do it. And on my road up to his place, 
I was praying, God, I hate to go tell him goodbye. I know if he just lived till I get there, I can tell him goodbye. Under oxygen, complete heart failure, 91 years old. I stepped outside of a filling station and I looked. And when I did, I seen Bill coming down the street and shook hands with me. Here he sits tonight. The doctor that told him that's dead and here sits Bill down himself. From Lima, Ohio. Driving down through the sleet and snow. Follows every meeting I go. Why? I looked. We saw something. That same God that I talked about last night down in Colorado in the time of a storm. I looked and I seen that he was the same yesterday, today, and forever. Here sits Mr. Way, an Englishman sitting here on the side of this right here now. Just notice him sitting here. He's come from Indiana. He's an Englishman. His wife is a, a registered nurse. Fine man. One day I talked to him as preaching in the meeting. He resented what I said in his heart. When he did, he dropped dead right in the audience. There he does. His wife took a hold of him and felt him. His eyes, face turned dark. His eyes not put on. His eyes pushed out and went back to the back of his head. I said, stand still. Look down there at him. And I thought, oh, there he goes. That man dead. When I put my hands up on him, he's just as cold as that desk is. He was gone. Miss Way said, oh, Brother Branham, he's gone. He's gone. He's screaming at the top of her voice. I looked away. I saw the resurrection in life. I prayed the prayer that Jesus told me to. And Brother Way raised up here. He sits right here tonight. Come up from the dead. Sitting right here tonight. That's right, Mr. Way. If you just stand up just a minute so the people see. Here's Bill Dow sitting here. What is it? Because we look at him who's the same. That raised Lazarus. He's the same. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. He don't change. Here sits a little preacher sitting here in front of me by the name of Blair. His little boy was in an accident the other day. And his wife sitting there wiping their eyes now from tears. They called me on the telephone down there and he said, Brother Branham, our little boy was in a car run over the hill. He's mashed, concussed his brain and everything. He's gone just about just barely breathing. I said, will you pray? I said, let's pray. And started looking on the phone and started praying. I said, Lord God, what shall I say to him? I seen a little boy going running, skipping a rope, running down like that. I said, he's going to be well. And here he is tonight. Here they are sitting here. Why? Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Look. Look. What do you see when you see him? I see the same healer. Amen. I see the same one that walked in Galilee. I see him in his power. I see him discerning the thoughts, the secrets of the heart. I show him showing the sign just before the end time. How we could go through this audience across the nations saying what he is today. You know what I think? Like the old Negro said one time in the slave time. One day he come around, he said, you know, the, I'm free now. So he got to tell him amongst the other slaves. And the slaves said, they got back to the owner. And the owner said, come in here, Sam. So what's that you're telling amongst the slaves out there? He said, boss, I am free said, how are you free? He said, I'm free from the law of sin and death, for Jesus Christ has made me free. He said, Sam, you mean that? He said, yes. He said, I'll go down and sign your release and let you go tell your brethren about that. The old man preached for years and years. Finally, one day, he come to his door. He had to part from this life. And while he was laying on his bed in a coma for a few days, many of his white brethren come along to, to see him, bid him goodbye because he'd been a gallant old soldier for Christ. While he was laying there on the bed, he come to, looked around. And he said, Moses, aren't you, Sam, aren't you gone yet? No. He said, I had to come back. He said, I thought I was there. He said, I, I, I must have dreamed. He said, I thought I was there. And while I was standing there, he said, an angel. I'd just been taken in the door. And said, an angel come up and said, Sam, come get your crown and come get your robe. He said, don't talk to me about a crown and robe. Just let me stand here and look at him for a million years. He saw in him the one that had set him free from sin and death. He saw there the one who stuck to him through thick and thin. Oh, God. The other morning, I was laying in my bed. I used to have, you know, my life story. I had an old dog. We called him Fritz. He sent me to school, possum hides and things. Or I used to take him every morning. I'd get up, way upstairs in the little log house. I'd hear him barking way down in the holler. He never lied to me. I always went to him. He had something for me. You know, one of these mornings, I'll hear him bark over there in the canyon. I must go over and see what he's got. It'll be all right. Listen, brother, let me tell you, there's only one thing to look when you see Jesus Christ. That's see God in him. The same yesterday, today, and forever. I believe he's here tonight to do for us the same as he did then. Let us bow our heads just a moment as we pray. Pray. Is there one in here tonight would say, Brother Branham, Ask God to be merciful to me. 
I want to look and see him different. I've looked at him and guessed. I've looked at him and wondered. I've looked at him and questioned. Really, did he care for me? Does he love me? Is all these things that's been said about him, is it true? I want to know if it's true. Will you ask him to reveal it to me tonight? Will you raise your hand? Lord bless you. It's good everywhere. Precious Lord, there's so much wrote about you. We know that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We pray, Lord, that tonight when we look that we'll see Jesus Christ. You promised in your word that the works that you did, we would do also. You promised in the last days that you would be back here on earth in the form of the Holy Spirit. The church would be full of power. The Holy Spirit. You said a little while, and it won't do the world no good to look because they won't see it. But ye shall see it. For I'll be with you, even in you, to the consummation. Lord Jesus, while there's still an opportunity for man to look, may they look tonight and see him in the power of his resurrection. He is not dead, but he lives forevermore, ready to make intercession for those who are ready to confess him. Grant it, Lord, and may all these requests that's been asked be granted. Father, grant these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now it's prayer time for the sick. I prayed for you. Believe that God will answer them. Now, I believe Billy said he'd give out more prayer cards. Right? Beast, beast. All right, we haven't got time. I went a little bit over time. Forgive me. Just got a few minutes. Um, be, uh, where, we, where, we night? where we leave off at him last night? Where we leave off? Where we leave off last night? Or talk all, well, let's start from B number one then. All right, number one, who had four, five. Um, somebody watch now. Get down here, Billy, some of you, right quick, because we haven't got time. Now, we just we don't take your time. Sometimes they're deaf and can't hear, or maybe can't get up or something. If they are, why? Number one, two, three, four, five. All right, come forward here, if you will. That's one, two, three, four. That's right. Pardon me, sir. A six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let them stand now. Six, uh, seven, eight, somebody now, eight, nine, ten, eight, nine, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, all right, ten to fifteen, stand up, and bees, well, that's all the cards is out, fifteen, all right, fifteen to twenty, stand up, one to twenty in prayer cards, take your place over here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, forty, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. That's it. Twenty to twenty-five. How many doesn't have a prayer card? You still believing? While they're coming, taking their place. While them twenty-five is first twenty-five is coming. Let me ask you. The Bible said in the book of Hebrews that Jesus Christ is our high priest. You believe that? One that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Are we going to sit in this day dull and see our great high priest make himself known among us and then set like dumb driven cattle? No, sir. Let us be up and doing the heart for any stride. Be not like dumb driven cattle. Be a hero. You people look this way and believe. Look in the scripture. What he promised. All right, we won't take any time. We'll start right in the prayer line. Let's pray again. Lord Jesus, it's in your hands now. I'm in your hands. Lord, take the word that you said like it was in the days of Sodom. One that I referred to tonight. You said in St. John 14, 12, when you was talking to your disciples about going away, you said, He that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also. The Bible said that God in sundry times and divers manners spake to the prophets, or spake to the fathers through the prophets in this last days through His Son, Jesus Christ. And He is the Word. We know that the prophets came, the Spirit come upon them, and made that Word live for that generation. Cursed the kings, brought in judgment, brought out righteous, saved the lost, the prophets that the Word come to. Now in this last day, Lord, you promised, you said, as it was in the days of Sodom, while Abraham sitting there in the heat of the day, the little called out church, we look down across the world today, Father, we see Sodom exactly, Gentiles, 
perverted, lukewarm. And we see these three angels appearing before Abraham. Two of them went down to the lukewarm church, Lot, to try to call them out. Two went down there, a modern Billy Graham, to call them out. No miracles, only blinded their eyes. Preaching the gospel does do that. But there was one stayed up here to Abraham's group, signifying the elected, called out that wasn't in Sodom, was born out of Sodom, the true church, the Abraham's seed of today. And when this man has talked to them, said, Where's Sarah, your wife? Said, She's in the tent behind you. And he said, I'm going to visit you according to the time of life. And she laughed. He said, Why did she laugh? Discern what she was saying and thinking in her, with his back turned to the tent where she was at. Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, has told us in his word, as it was in that day, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And it's a very strange thing, Father, that there's never been a reformer in all the ages that's went down into Sodom with a name ending H-A-M until today. Your servant, Billy Graham, down in Sodom doing his work. Now, Father, I pray that you'll save the seed of Abraham that's here tonight. Fill him with the Holy Spirit, with the precious promised Son. Immediately after this God manifested in flesh did this sign, then the promised Son came on the scene. God, we've been looking for him for 2,000 years, the seed of Abraham. Many are sleeping. This is the seventh watch. We are looking for the cry to come at any time. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Grant tonight, Father, that people's understandings will be opened up. And they'll see that this sign was promised just before the coming sun. That as the brass serpent typified Christ, so did the coming sun and the sign of his coming in the natural typify the spiritual of the coming Jesus today. The royal seed of Abraham. Grant it, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name as we commit ourselves to you. Amen. Now, I would like to say one thing just before we pray for the sick. Many people have the wrong impression about a gift. A gift is not something that God gives you to go out and say, Here, I'll go over here and pick out this, and I'll take that, and I'll do this. That's not a gift. So many people think that, but they're wrongly impressed. A gift of God is just to know how to get yourself out of the way so God can use you. That's all a gift is. As long as you're in yourself. Didn't Jesus say himself, the Son can do... St. John 5, 19. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing in himself. He passed by that pool where all that cripples was and healed one man with prostrate trouble or something, or disease retarded. He said, the Son can do nothing in himself, but what he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. It's not me, said it, doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Now you people sitting out there... Don't you dare to look to any man. You look to Christ. He's the one. But he promised in the last days that he would manifest himself in human flesh like he did there at Sodom. Now your flesh, my flesh. Let us just open our hearts and get our own thinking away and just let the word take its course tonight in us. Then we'll see God's great gifts of his spirit manifested before us. Be real reverent. Nobody leave. Keep real quiet and pray. I'm sure you appreciate it. And if there's anybody here that thinks this is a hoax... I challenge you to come to the platform. Anybody. Then if you're afraid to do it, don't say nothing about it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take every spirit in here under my control to declare the Word of God. Here's a picture tonight. Like St. John, the fourth chapter. A man and a woman meet together. I suppose for the first time. I don't know you. You probably know me by papers and and hearsay but I don't know you you know that we're strangers to each other like our Lord met a woman one time at the well man and woman meeting talking but if I come like uh, one of some of our brethren would say God gave me a gift of healing you know what the gift of healing is faith in healing see you just release your faith to pray for somebody that's all a gift of healing is every minister should have it every body see, should have gift of healing the power that heals you is on the inside of you, the Holy Spirit. You just have to let it work its way out. That's all. 
It's like the life that's in the tree. You don't have to pour the apples in the tree to make it bear apples. It's just planted in the ground and it drinks and pushes out. Well, that's the way you do the Holy Spirit. It's on the inside of you. You just drink from the inexhaustible fountain of Jesus Christ and it pushes out Amen. the fruits of the Spirit. See? Now I'm standing here not knowing you. God knows that. You're a total stranger. Now if I went and put hands on you and said, Sister, you're going to get well. You could believe that. That'd be all right. But now what? If he comes... See, that was the days gone by, back in the Pentecostal days. We're living ahead of that now. We're beyond Pentecost. The same as we are Methodist and Lutheran. We're way on up to the coming of the Lord. Where the ministry that Jesus Christ exercised himself has to be exactly like the headstone in the pyramid. has to be so honed that every stone fits perfectly. And the church has got to get in that condition to receive the headstone. Then take the whole thing in the resurrection when the body's raised up. You believe that? You believe these things that I tell you is the truth? You do. If the Lord Jesus will tell me something that you've done, something that you ought not have done, something that's wrong with you, whatever it might be, financial, domestic, I don't know. Whatever it is, you'll believe me, will you, to be his servant? You are a Christian. See, I spoke to you just to find your spirit. That's why he did it at the well. He said, bring me a drink. You're a Christian. You are a believer. That's right. Not a hitchhiker, a believer. <laughs> All right? Your trouble, your main trouble is in your neck. You're on the back of your neck. You have a growth. And that growth is giving you pressure. It's ruining your eyes and so forth. Is that right? That's thus saith the Lord. That's right. If you believe it, it'll leave. God bless you. How do you do, sir? I don't know you. We're strangers to one another. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. If I can relax myself... Such enough that the Holy Spirit can use my lips and my eyes. Just like, did you ever dream a dream? Sure. There's some, some part of you. You have to be inactive in your five senses. You have, to, you have a conscious and a subconscious. Your first conscience is here and your subconscious is over here. You have to be inactive in your five senses to go over here to dream. But when you come back and it presses this, do you remember what you dreamed of? Now, seers, prophets, their subconscious is not over there. It's right here. You don't get out of your five senses. You stand, you're standing dreaming. And you'd say, dream, I'd say, dream me a dream. You couldn't do it. Neither can I see you a vision. It takes God to do that. But I don't go to sleep to see it. I stand here and see it. That's a gift of God. If I can get the first conscience out of the way, God will use the other conscience. If he has anything to say, that's up to him. But if I be able, by the help of God, if Jesus is standing here with this suit on that he gave me, if you're sick, he cannot heal you. No, he's already did that when he died. But I don't know what you're here for. You're just a man. We're around close to the same age, and we're just, just standing here on the platform meeting for the first time. You believe God can reveal to me your desires or what you've done or your hindrances? If he can tell you what has been, he can tell you what will be. Do you believe that? I don't want to take too much time, but I preached hard. And you've got the uh, time nervous. You've got to really relax because there's nothing I can do unless he shows me. Yes, here it is. The light coming over the man. All right, sir? No, sir. You're not here for yourself. You're here for somebody else. And that's a daughter. And that daughter lives in California. And she's had an automobile accident some time ago. And you won't be you were standing for me to pray for her because she's still afflicted by it. And listen, let me tell you something. That automobile accident was not in California. It was in Dallas, Texas, where the automobile accident happened. Is that right? She's going to be well. Don't forget, I see her walk away. Um, go and believe now, brother. God bless you. How do you do, lady? I'm a stranger to you. We do not know one another. We're perfectly strangers. Do you believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? You believe him. Now, if the Holy Spirit can tell me something about you, that you know I know not, then that'd make you believe, wouldn't it? You are you have complications, you have many things, but what your main thing is, you're about to face an operation on account of a tumor, and that tumor is in your side. That is right. That's right. That's what you're here to be prayed for. If I could tell you what your name is, would you believe me to be his prophet or believe it it would be Miss Holman? Go on your road rejoice. God bless you. Believe now, don't doubt. How do you do, lady? Strangers to one another. You're younger than I, just a woman and a man. Just a moment. Everybody real reverent. Spirit of the Lord left you. 
This man sitting here with glasses on. Got a spiritual problem in your mind. You don't know what to do. You're all messed up. You believe and you'll come out all right. Yes, sir. You do that? All right. Be reverent now. Here's a little lady sitting right out here. She looking like this with her hands praying. She's got a bad hand that she's praying about. If you'll believe, yes, God will make it well. I don't know you. You don't know me. But you touch something, you never touch me. You're 20 feet from me. Jesus Christ heals you. Your faith makes you whole. If that ain't the same Jesus, a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Don't you believe that to be so? Excuse me. I just had to follow the way that goes. Getting weak now, I see. It's just one, you know, our Lord, a woman touched his garment one time and he said, uh, Pardon me. This colored lady sitting here praying. Gallbladder trouble, high blood pressure. Believe, lady, it'll leave you. <laughs> I looked, there's a colored lady standing here. See, her faith drew it right away. And. That lady right behind her with asthma, if you believe that God will make you well of that asthma, you can have it also, if you believe it. You have a great desire in your heart. And that's a, a legitimate desire. You want a baby. And the reason you can't have it, you have a female trouble. Is that true? Uh, do you believe that it, God will give it to you? Yes, if the Lord Jesus will tell me who you are, will you believe? Yes. Mrs. Lambert, yes. now you go believe. Does that make you believe? Amen. May she receive it, God. In the name of Jesus. Have faith. Sir, we're strangers to one another. But God knows us both. Do you believe that the Lord Jesus will reveal to me your troubles? You do. You're not from here. You're not from Arizona. You're from the way east. Michigan. <laughs> right? You have high blood pressure. Hardening of the arteries. Hard of hearing. It's left you. Go back to Michigan. Lord Jesus, make you right now. Have faith in God. Lady sitting out here. Praying for... Her father, he's got Parkinson's disease. And the, I see him now, and he's shadowed. Not only is he shadowed to death, but to eternal death because he's not saved. That's true. You believe that God will save him and heal him? If you've got faith enough to touch Jesus Christ, our high priest, Surely you can accept that. Now, will you do me a favor? Put your hand on that woman next to you. She's praying for our brother. That brother's sick. And he's also an alcoholic. That is true. Just believe he'll stop drinking and get well. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. The lady sitting here praying, right here in front of me, got her head down. I can tell you she's praying, Lord, let it be me. The lady is, she's praying for a friend. And that friend is in the hospital here, dying with cancer. And for herself also, she's going to miss it. Mrs. Kelly, stand up to your feet and accept the healing in the name of Jesus Christ. I've never seen a woman in my life. Do you believe God heals heart trouble? you believe He heals yours? All right, then just move on saying thank you, dear God. Glory to God. Hard for you to get up at morning, you're so stiff with that arthritis. It won't be that way tomorrow if you'll just believe it and go on. 
پایچان You need a blood transfusion from Calvary. Cures diabetes and everything. You believe it, he does that? All right, yours can be cured too if you just believe with all your heart. Come here. You're nervous. That's what's caused your trouble. You got an ulcered stomach. You believe that God will heal it? Yes, I do. I'll show you something. I'll take my watch off just a minute. Nervous is kind of hard, but you're... Good soul, let me have your hand. I want to take your hand. Won't you look at my hand? I watch. I want to lay your hand up on top of mine. And I see it. See them things running across there. And little vibrations like Mr. that's that live ulcer. I watch. Take your hand off. That turns back normally. Now I lay my hand on there. It doesn't do that, does it? But I put your hand on. There it is again. See. Yes. Now there's something symbolizing there that you can actually see with your own eyes. Is that right? Yes. Raise your hand up so the audience can see. That's true. Thank you, Lord. Here, the audience can see. Put your hand. Now take your hand off, lady. Now lay your hand back on there. It's a live ulcer. It's tissue. Something eating up tissue. It's causing nervousness spreading. You have ladies' trouble too. All right. Now here. Now this is when you have to take initiative. Just so this lady will know. I want the audience to keep their heads down and pray. Because it goes from one to another. When you have to... Uh, Jesus said, in my name they shall cast out devils. Now you keep your head bowed if you don't want to ulcer. Now here, I want you to watch. You've got the ulcer. Now you watch my hand and see that I don't move my hand. Heavenly Father, let thy mercies and grace be upon the woman to make her well. She's watching my hand. She's watching, Father, to see if there's any change. And I know that her faith being nervous, I pray, God, that you'll help her. In Jesus' name, help her. Now, the lady, I haven't opened my eyes yet, but the lady knows that my hand still remains just as it was. Isn't that right, lady? Yes, sir. Now, watch it real close now. So this is not done to make a show. This is done to declare that Jesus keeps his word. Now, he said, in my name, they shall cast out devils. Now, I'm going to hold my hand just to study. And I want you to notice, it's not the way I hold my hand. See, it's there all the time. See how it's swelling up? Yes. Getting worse all the time. Yes. Because I'm holding my whole hands numb to my elbow. Now, you just watch it just a moment. Lord Jesus, not for a show. We're not to do that. But that your word might be fulfilled. You never heal the people just because to show you were God. But it was fulfilling the word. And that's why I, why I do this tonight, Father. Is my faith to believe that this good woman can be healed of this demon. Satan, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ, who triumphed over all sickness, and it's under his feet, and it's his servant, I take the initiative. In Jesus' name, leave the woman, come out of her. Now, I have not moved my hand. The lady bear me record. Something happened to my hand, wasn't it? Yes, sir. If that's right, say amen. Yes, amen. It's gone, isn't it? Yes, amen. It's You're gone. healed. Hallelujah. Now, there she is. Thank you, Jesus. I look here. I put my hand on. I put your hand on. Just the same. You're healed. One, go eat your supper. Jesus Christ, mission. My name, they shall cast out devils. Yes. Do you believe, sister? You believe? You believe that God can take that asthmatic condition away from you and make you well? Thank you, Lord. Go on your road and say, thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe you with all my heart. How do you do, sir? Heart's been bothering you. It's kind of a blockage. Cause some nervous. Pounds. Double pound. One on two on one side and one on the other. All right, sir. It stops now. Your faith makes you whole, sir. Go believing with all your heart. All right? Another stomach. Bad. You believe that Jesus makes you well? Let's go say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Believe it. If he can tell you what you are, surely he can heal you. What if I didn't say one word to you, just laid hands on you? Would you believe that you got healed sitting there in a the chair? Would you go on your road and say, thank you, Lord. It's what you believe. Come. You believe that God healed that back trouble sitting there then? All right, go on and say, thank you, Lord. Believe with all your heart. Go on and believe. Sir, if God don't heal you, one day you're going to be crippled up like this with a stick walking along with that arthritis. Why not accept him right now? Do you believe it? Go on your road and say, thank you, Lord. Stomp the thing and go right on your road rejoicing. 
Jesus heals your back, make you well. Do you believe that? Or go right on your road saying, thank you, dear God. Come here, lady. Now, what you scared of? The reason you're afraid, it's menopause time for you. You know what I mean? Ladies change. And everything of an evening late, you get weary. You can't do your work. You get so tired. Isn't that right? That's true. All right. It's all right now. Your faith makes you. Another. Nervous. But you've been nervous all your life. Been a little nervous when you're younger. You're a little fritzy going around. But now it looks like something's just got a hold of you. You're oppressed all the time. Isn't that right? It won't be no more if you believe me. Right now it's God's prophet. Go and believe. How many out there believe with all your heart? Put your hands over on one another. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I charge every man and woman here to lay your hands on one another. If God's word, part of it's right, all of it's right. Jesus Christ said, "In if my name they shall cast out devils. The word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Jesus said, if they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Every believer in here say amen to that. Then you are believers. You pray for the one who's got it. You're, you pray for the one who's got their hands on you, for they're praying for you. Let's pray together and defeat the enemy and let every sick person in here be healed in the presence of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, author of life, giver of all good gifts, send our blessings upon this people. Satan, you've lost the battle. Jesus Christ is here. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Christians have their hands on one another. They're praying the prayer of faith. You said these signs shall follow them that believe. Each one of them said, Amen. They believe. They punctuated the desire of your heart. When you said these signs shall follow them that believe, they lay their hands on one another. You are defeated, Satan. Come out of them in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave this place and leave this building in Jesus Christ's name. Every man and woman that believes that a believer has his hands on you, the prayer of faith is prayed, and you're ready to forsake your sickness, forsake your thoughts about it, and accept the word of God to go in your heart. Stand up on your feet and accept your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Raise up your hands now and give me praise, for it's all over.